Okay, so today I thought I would talk a little bit about vitamin C. Um, I'm going to feature a different skincare ingredient each week. Last week was hyaluronic acid, which was more of a rant video. This week I just want to talk about vitamin C since there's so many different options of vitamin C. Some do very different things from one to the next. There's so many different derivatives and I'm going to focus on seven of them. And I'm going to show you some examples of certain products that contain the ingredients and I can also put cut and paste this below so you guys can have reference to it. Uh, so a little bit about vitamin C. It's a good antioxidant. Uh, an antioxidant means it's something that will prevent and remove free radicals from the skin. Free radicals uh, are what damage the skin and cause aging. So uh, you definitely want to help encourage and prevent free radical damage and help your skin prevent them and fight them off. Uh, cells typically can be damaged from like pollution and just as your skin ages, uh, the collagen in your skin breaks down. And vitamin C, if it helps fight off the free radicals, it can also, certain types can help uh, enhance collagen building over time. So uh, it's very important to have a good vitamin C serum in your routine. I typically recommend using it in your morning routine right before your sunscreen because your sunscreen also helps your skin fight off damage from the rays and things like that. So vitamin C is great and it can also help your sunscreen work better by protecting the skin from free radicals. So very important to use alongside sunscreen. So the first uh, form of vitamin C I'm going to talk about is one of the most common ones and that is just plain alizorbic acid. Uh, so and then I'm going to talk about uh, the other six derivatives but most of the derivatives are uh, kind of a spin-off on L-azorbic acid. So uh, very common, timeless vitamin C serum, a great one, Dr. Brenner vitamin C serum, and so many other ones. But uh, So L-azorbic acid is the preferred version of vitamin C because of the amount of collagen production and UV protection it helps to provide. The biggest issue and the reason why a lot of brands don't use uh, L-sorbic acid is because of the low pH it requires, uh, typically under like 3, 3.3, and um, the higher the pH, the less of it that gets absorbed into your skin, and the less of it that gets absorbed, then it's not really doing anything. Uh, it also is notoriously an unstable ingredient, so the second you open this up, it's exposed to light and air, it begins to degrade from there which is why um, a lot of brands just don't have successful vitamin C serums because it requires frequent manufacturing. I think Dr. Brenner makes a new batch, was it once every three weeks? And Timeless, I think it's about the same as well. And a lot of brands just don't want to commit to making a specific product every three weeks. Like Drunk Elephant, I don't know if they manufacture their vitamin C like once every five years or something, but... When it first came out, it was great, and then it just got worse and worse, and every bottle I buy since then, it's worse. I don't know. So that's also why a lot of brands just don't do a good job with it, and why certain brands have a niche, like Timeless with their vitamin C. Um, so when it's properly formulated, the l acid can help firm skin and help even skin tone. Uh, it also helps... Uh, your skin fried off free radicals and external stressors, ideally used in the morning. Pros are it's effective, affordable, and several studies, many studies, prove its efficacy. Cons with it, it's non-stable, it oxidizes rapidly, and requires a very specific pH to function properly. So these are a couple of my favorites, um, and then I'll list my examples below. The next type would be uh, ethyl azorbic acid, which is abbreviated EAC. It's a very stable and promising form of vitamin C, uh, and it's starting to show up in a lot of products. I don't know, I've got tons of them that contain this version. Uh, here's a few of them. There we go. Uh, so it's a very promising form. It can also be very good for help to brighten your skin and whiten your skin. Uh, so let's see, they, uh, the optimal conditions for it are pH of 5.4. Uh, EAC has been developed as a stable vitamin C derivative and also been used in topical products to help specifically with pigmentation issues. So uh, I will say the allies of skin finally changed their packaging. So they went from this packaging, which was 
a little bit messy. Then they went to a dropper bottle for a few months and now they have it repackaged in a similar bottle to this, uh, but one that works better. So um, the Banana Bright from Ole Henriksen contains it. It's got too much fragrance in it. Uh, Derma Doctor, I really like this one. Very good for brightening the skin. Uh, the pharmacy version as well. These all contain uh, that ethyl azorbic acid. And the pros of that form of vitamin C, it's very stable. It doesn't oxidize quickly, so you don't feel like you open it up and you need to use it within like a day or two. So that's nice. Uh, cons of it, more research is needed in a lot of these other derivatives. That's the biggest thing. We need more studies, more research to prove what they're good for and what they're not good for. So, uh, so if something like brightening your skin tone is a big deal, this might be the form to go for. I still think there's more studies needed, but out of all these, I will say the Allies is amazing. So uh, anyway, so there we go with that form. The next one up is magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which I don't have a ton of products with that in it, but uh, we've got these three. And the Mad Hippie I'll be reviewing uh, this week as well. So, so MAP is what they call it, and I love an abbreviation. So MAP is a water-soluble solution and very stable up to a pH of 7, which gives you a lot more wiggle room when it comes to formulating something. MAP is typically poorly absorbed by skin. A 10% solution of MAP is considered high. However, even with a concentration like that, only 2 to 3% of it will come in contact and be absorbed by your skin. That is because MAP must be converted into pure allosorbic acid before it's broken down into the skin. Uh, many studies have shown that this derivative is one of the best for brightening and evening out skin tone, although not all, this, not all these studies agree on that, which is something I find that's common with a lot of these derivatives. I'll read one thing where it says it's great for brightening, and then I'll read another one that says, this is the worst one for brightening your skin. So when you read things like that, it makes you kind of think, you know what, I should just go back to straight l acid. It's got all the studies that prove it. And MAP still needs more studies. Uh, so this says approximately 5% MAP concentrations can help to even out skin tones. Studies have also found that MAP is better at l acid at penetrating into the deeper layers of skin. It is also a great vitamin C form for helping to hydrate skin. MAP also has collagen boosting properties unlike most of the other vitamin C derivatives. So the pro with MAP, uh, it's highly stable, very effective for brightening the skin. The cons are it's not easily absorbed by the skin and it takes a very high percentage to notice benefits. So I'm trying to think this one, the ordinary one, that's 10%. So if it says 10%, maybe 2% is getting really absorbed and converted into l acid. Whereas if you've got something like the Timeless, where it's 20% vitamin C, you know you're getting that amount. So something to consider. So these are a couple of them. I think the 100% Pure Serum, and they've got their Antioxidant Serum as well, is a great one too. So, And the Mad Hippie, this one actually has three forms of vitamin C. So, And I'm going to re be reviewing that one next week. So keep your eye out for that. Okay, so the next form... AP, Azorbyl Palmitate, and sadly I don't have a ton of products with it in there, but uh, it's an ester formed from azorbic acid and palmitic acid, and it creates a fat-soluble form of vitamin C. Since it's fat-soluble, it may not penetrate into the skin very well. You know, like oils, they have a tendency to kind of sit on your skin. That's the same issue here. So Azorbyl Palmitate has many of the shortcomings that l acid does. It's not super stable. It's also prone to breaking down and oxidizing quickly when exposed to air. Uh, studies performed on ascorbyl palmitate have tended to show that uh, ascorbyl palmitate does not seem to easily convert into l acid into the skin. And since, palmitic, since the palmitic molecule makes up half of the ascorbyl palmitate, uh, it makes it even more difficult for the vitamin C to penetrate into the skin. Some studies show that ascorbyl palmitate can help reduce environmental stress or damage and help it work as an antioxidant. So this one is probably why I don't have a ton of products with it in there because it has a lot of the shortcomings that l acid does, but they haven't proven that it has all the benefits yet. So 
what's the point of messing around with it if it's got the shortcomings but none of the good things? Um, so the pros, some studies show it might help fight environmental damage. Cons, not very stable and it may not penetrate in the skin very easily. So these are a couple examples of, and I really like both of these products. So both fragrance free. Indy Lee's got a lot of fragrance in some of her products, but the daily vitamin infusion nutrition line is pretty good. So, okay. So on to the next form, which is <sighs> Ascorbyl Tetra Tetra Scalpalmatol, also known as Tetrahexyl Decyl Ascorbate. I'm going to call it a tip. A-T-I-P. <laughs> okay. And we've got some examples of it here. Let's see. And my beloved potency power serum. Okay. So, a tip is an oil soluble derivative of vitamin C, and its penetration abilities seem to be very great. It's relatively stable as long as the pH is less than 5. So, you still have to do some reading up on that because, as you know, a lot of brands just don't do a great job with their pH levels of their products. I'm going to have to do a pH test fails video because there's just some crazy ones out there. So, so a tip appears to be very gentle, derivative, and rarely causes any irritation, which makes it great for sensitive skin. The main benefit of a tip is for brightening and evening out skin tones. It can also enhance the benefits of other types of vitamin C as well as vitamin A. At this point, some very small studies state that a tip potentially has the trifecta of vitamin C benefits, such as antioxidant protection, increases collagen production, and brightens the skin. So these studies are still very small and more studies need to be done to prove this, which is like the case with all these derivatives. There just isn't enough studies to really prove. Uh, so pros, stable, may have a lot of brightening effects, gentle for skin, and it can also increase and enhance the other ingredients in other products you use, vitamin A and vitamin C. Cons, there's not a lot of studies on this. There's still more studies that need to prove how effective this is and really if it has a trifecta. Because if it has a trifecta and it's gentle, it might be the way to go. But we just don't know because there's not enough studies. Okay. So next one, sodium ascorbyl phosphate, SAP. <laughs> that is the uh, name for it. And I don't have a ton of these, this one either. So SAP is a promising derivative that has a great stability up to pH of seven, but it's not uh, absorbed easily into the skin again. Uh, compared to L-sorbic acid, SAP is poorly absorbed by the skin. It is thought that it functions as an antioxidant, is potentially effective for brightening an uneven skin tone. There are also some studies that show SAP can help prevent, treat, and heal acne. So if acne is a huge issue, this might be the form to go with. A uh, 2005 study in vitro sh showed that 1% SAP has a strong antimicrobial activity on evil acne-causing uh, bacteria and has also showed on real people that 5% sap can strongly improve their anti-inflammatory and non-inflammatory non lesions of acne. So the results were comparable or even slightly better than a test case of 5% benzoyl peroxide, which is the standard acne treatment. So the pros, it might be an effective acne treatment and it's rather stable and it might help with brightening. The cons are that only a small amount of sap is absorbed by the skin, therefore you need a higher percentage in the product you're using so that more gets absorbed. So these are a couple products. Not a huge fan of this one. And now I've got like three samples of it. I bought one sample and I tried it and then I got another one, of course. So, But the Revolution uh, Dark Spot, I do like this. So I'll have to review this one soon. Okay, and lastly, I've got tons of this one. <clears throat> Azorbyl glucoside. Okay. So, AG is what they call it. It's a stable derivative of vitamin C that is combined with glucose. Uh, AG works as an antioxidant. When it is properly formulated, studies show that it will break down into the skin into L-azorbic acid, which is what we want. 
AG on its own might not have all the skin brightening effective effects that all of the other derivatives do. More studies are needed to demonstrate how well this type of vitamin C works. After reading everything about this, in my opinion, this is probably the second most promising derivative of vitamin C right behind the uh, ATIP one, uh, just because it might be absorbed into skin readily uh, and it's very stable, so you don't have to worry about it oxidizing as quickly and you don't feel like you need to hurry up and use it. Uh, there's more studies, in my opinion, that need to be done, of course. Uh, this one might not help with brightening as much as some of the other derivatives, but this one is frequently used in a lot of products. So uh, the Avene A oxidative water, the Inky List, uh, Tranexamic Night Treatment, the Acure Bakuchoi. Choi. The Ordinary, they've done a great job because I think they have a version for every single one of these, which I think at some point I've tried them all. Uh, and then the Bioderma Pigment Bio, which is ironic that for their Pigment Bio they chose this version, while well, some studies show it might not be totally as brightening as other versions. But for one study, you can go and find another one that says the exact opposite. There's just, there's just not a lot of studies done on this and not a lot of research, independent research, that's been done. Although I'm sure a lot of these brands have done their own research with their own scientists and things like that to prove what they want to prove so it's very interesting so there's there's more i just picked the seven most popular there's more than that out there but um overall i think it's important to have a good vitamin c serum in your routine regardless of which one you choose uh and the other nice thing is you can use vitamin c in the morning and use it in your evening routine as well. So if you want to use something that you know is proven antioxidant abilities in your morning routine, and then use something that's proven for brightening in your evening, or the one that's proven for acne prevention in your evening routine, you can certainly do that as well. So you're kind of getting some of the good effects and trying out some of the new derivatives as well to see if they might work for your skin better. Because you never know what might work for my skin wonderfully, might not work for the next person, and vice versa. You just don't know until you really try it. So it's fascinating. I'll have to do more. Maybe I can do a video about each derivative in depth. But overall, it's my basic primer for vitamin C. So I know a lot of you guys will have opinions on all of this. So I'm looking forward to them. Um, I'll cut and paste all of this so you can read it below and then find the examples of each product with the ingredient in them. So got a lot of vitamin C, don't I? Gotta start getting through this stuff. So anyway, although this bottle is pretty much almost fully empty. So uh, anyway, so I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on it. Do you have a favorite derivative? And if so, what it is and what you like about it. So leave a comment. I love hearing from you and stay tuned for more tomorrow. And if you want to nominate the next ingredient spotlight, I was thinking retinols, retinoids. I don't know. Leave a comment. Anyway, thank you guys so much, and I will see you tomorrow.